Hello, everyone. Right, let's see. We can turn this on. Hey, Chris. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're waiting for uh, the graduates to arrive back from main grounds. Uh, that's happening about according to plan. So right now, it looks like we will start on time at about 1.15. Um, and at this time, I'd like to ask uh, that the programs begin to be passed out, so the graduation programs. There's one important thing about those programs, and that is when you receive them, you'll notice that uh, next to people's names, there might be an award that they're given. Uh, a lot of those students don't know that they're receiving an award until they walk across stage. So we'd ask your help in keeping that secret uh, from the graduates until they learn about it when they're up on stage. So please do that and uh, don't tell any of the graduates uh, of any awards. So, uh, so again, about 1.15 is what we're looking at for a start time. Thank you. show you one thing.
Okay, everyone, just about five minutes before the ceremony starts, about five minutes.
really are, yeah.
afternoon. Please be seated. My name is Bob Bruner. I'm the Dean of the Darden School. And on behalf of the faculty and staff and the worldwide Darden community, I welcome you all here. This is, this is a gorgeous day. It's exactly the kind of closing to a two-year experience at Darden that we wish for all of our students. I'm delighted to see you. Let me, uh, let me introduce uh, my colleagues who are on the stage. I have with me here Sankaran Venkatraman, who's the MasterCard Professor of Business Administration and Senior Associate Dean for Faculty and Research. Also, Peter Rodriguez is the Senior Associate Dean for Degree Programs and Chief Diversity Officer. Helen Beckenstein is Professor of Business Administration <clears throat> and Chair of the Academic Standards Committee that follows the progress of our students and certifies their readiness to receive the MBA degree. Then we have Yorgo Salianis, who is the Associate Dean of the Global MBA for Executives Program. Paul Simcoe, Associate Professor of Business Administration and former Associate Dean of the MBA for Executives Program. Also on the stage with me today are four faculty marshals for the class of 2014. Professors Greg Fairchild and Bobby Parmar were elected by the class as faculty marshals, and Professors Jim Clausen and Robert Speckman, both of whom will retire soon from Darden, were selected as honorary faculty marshals. <clears throat> to all of our visitors, it's important to say that this class's selection of the faculty marshals signifies the great esteem that the students hold for their faculty and for excellent teaching at Darden, which is really the hallmark of our culture. The faculty marshals led the Darden graduates down the lawn this morning during the University of Virginia's commencement exercises, <clears throat> and these professors represent the heart and values of Darden. They exhibit zeal for teaching. They support the students and take great pride in the students' success. They work hard. They write original teaching materials. They prepare for case discussions alone, and more importantly, often in teams. They take great pride in uh, conducting research. They come to class prepared, inspired, and ready to deliver the world's best educational experience, which according to numerous uh, rankings is uh, without peer. So Darden is known for so many things. Please join me in congratulating Greg, Bobby, Jim, and Robert for their distinctive achievements. I also want to be sure to recognize Darden faculty and staff who have worked so hard to prepare the logistics and details for this wonderful event. Some of them arrived well before dawn to begin preparing for your graduation ceremony and uh, their dedication is a hallmark of our high-touch orientation here. Please join me in a round of applause to the staff. <laughs> also present with us are two members of the University of Virginia Board of Visitors who processed with the faculty, Mr. Hunter Craig and Dr. Stephen Long. Uh, I would ask you to join me in thanking them for their service to the university. And then I, I'm going to say it again, though you've heard it on the lawn, but I think we need to acknowledge <clears throat> the families and friends of the graduates, particularly parents whose encouragements and self-sacrifice did so much to prepare and sustain students for the high academic performance they achieved. To the parents, I, I'm a parent of uh, students of this vintage, and, and I would say I, I know firsthand the sacrifice and investment that it takes uh, to at least getting your kid prepared to win a place at a school like Darden. It's, it's no walk in the park. There are lots of late nights and weekends, lots of nudging, lots of uh, stretching, probably uh, uh, sacrificing financially and in terms of time and location and uh, well done to all of the mothers, fathers, and families in the vicinity, please.
So as dean, my job is to set a tone for this gathering and uh, mainly to introduce three speakers. As popular perceptions might have it, we ought to have uh, three case discussions, perhaps, instead of speeches. <laughs> Maybe three cold calls. <laughs> Maybe a few PowerPoints or some online uh, simulation thrown in for good measure. Darden's reputation in the broader world is about active, not passive learning. It's about debating with your peers and about figuring things out for yourself. All of this is true so far. But Darden is also about listening really well. And that's the theme of the tone I want to set for this gathering. That's certainly what I'm going to ask you to do for our three speakers this afternoon. And more importantly, it's, it's uh, the idea that I want to leave with you as you go on to pursue your careers from here. Listening well seems to be a fading art. We've learned over the past few weeks about commencement speakers who were uninvited because some students at those institutions didn't want to listen to them. Yet free speech is a core value at universities. You might disagree with a speaker, but it won't hurt to listen. And of course, just this past week, we learned uh, about the reported... Thank you. I, I could go off script on this point and talk at great length. <laughs> but uh, I won't. So just this past week, the newspapers reported the forthcoming retirement of Barbara Walters, the TV interviewers. In, in one headline, she was called one of America's last great listeners. Now I ask you, why is she the last? Aren't people listening anymore? This is a subject of great concern to the best business practitioners and the likes of McKinsey and Company. Uh, our, our, our own uh, Darden fellow, Kevin Scherer, even WikiHow have uh, weighed in on the subject. Sources like these raise a host of great tactics for good listening. <clears throat> for instance, they advise us to show respect, establish eye contact, stop talking and be silent, encourage the speaker with body language and active listening techniques, and so on. So these are great tactics, but I think there's a lot more. The more is that I think there's too much noise that we allow into our environment and not enough respectful silence for others to unfold their ideas for us. One sees countless errors, such as willful distraction, arriving late, leaving early, pointless interruption, and so on. Now, some of this might be invited by the speakers themselves, but the fact is we're just awash in noise, spam, push marketing, ephemeral stuff. Of course, lazy listening passively digests it all. So what is great listening? Great listening is the process of really truly separating the signal from the noise, of discerning what resonates or disagrees with you, and of triangulating or testing what you hear with what you know. So the three ideas I want to leave you with are signal, resonance, and triangulation. You can adapt great listening not only to an encounter with one person, of course, and this is the bigger idea, but you can adapt it to the world at large. So my advice is that whatever you do next, find some quiet where you can spend part of each day to separate signal from noise. Susan Cain, in her book titled Quiet, offers a powerful argument in favor of reflection and deep listening. In effect, she says, you ought to think like an introvert. Introverts think before they speak. Extroverts like to speak in order to think. Next, I urge you to sample widely across sources of information that you tap each day. Get out of your daily me. Daily me is the echo chamber <clears throat> of favorite websites, Facebook pages, chat rooms, and so on that simply reinforce what you already know and believe. Finally, I urge you to drill deeply into what it is about the signals you get that deeply resonates with you. So much of the advice for new graduates is always salted with action-taking, risk-taking, 
go get them, bust out, and so on. But what these messages miss is any sensible direction for the path on which you are commencing. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. The prerequisite to setting in any good direction is not just planning or data analysis or scenario testing. No, the very first step is to listen really well. Now, we heard President Sullivan say a few nice things about Darden this morning on grounds. One of them is, speaks to something else that we do really well at Darden, and that is we give back. We are not just a business school about business. We are about business in society, business creating a better world. And how about the fact that the class of 2014 pledged among 99% of its classmates toward giving back to the university? Is that good or what? So let's turn now to our student speakers. Please join me in wel welcoming to the podium Stephanie Scuderi. Stephanie has been selected as the speaker representing the Global MBA for Executives program, and uh, she will offer some remarks on behalf of the class. <laughs> Please. Thank you to the uh, wonderfully supportive administration, the faculty, our parents, our families, our friends. It's from all of you that we learn that encouragement and inspiration go hand in hand. You encouraged us to ask questions. Why? Why not? What's your cost of debt? <laughs> you inspired us. You inspired us to reach higher to do and to be more. You inspired us to avoid that complacent sense of satisfaction. 20th century journalist Sidney Harris said, the whole purpose of education is to turn mirrors into windows. And as Darden graduates, we're here before you today not content with the reflection of what is. We're here today able to envision what could be armed with the tools to define and defend what should be, and of course, how to get there. In 2012, August, was the last time we were all together as one group, the full-time MBAs, the executive MBAs, the global executive MBAs. Dean Bruner and Peter Rodriguez welcomed us to Darden introduced us to this concept of a trustworthy process, rooted in the case method, peppered with the dreaded cold calls. It would, Peter said, quoting Mark Twain, take us from cocky ignorance to miserable uncertainty. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, we'll bring in Ernest Hemingway. Because through this process, we would learn that man can be destroyed, but he cannot be defeated destroyed, defeated. Ignorance, uncertainty, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> to my class, the global executives, they say our class has a bond like none other. And for that, heartfelt gratitude to the admissions team, a tip of the hat for a job very well done. For our process, like each cohort, was unique. Six terms, 22 months, countless hours of distance classes, hundreds of hours spent in windowless conference rooms around the world, and yet we never let it slow us down. We sambaed past midnight, well past midnight, <laughs> in the slums of Rio. We steeped ourselves in the culture of France, basking for one glorious afternoon in the presidential suite of the Georges V in Paris. We breathe deeply that special Delhi air while meditating with Hindu yogis. And we were the class, the cohort, who retired Brant Allen with a toast or two on the Great Wall of China. And through it all, 
We had tri personal triumphs and trials back home. Thousands of miles away, things unfolded, things evolved, sometimes very much out of our control. Yet we celebrated together with enthusiasm and laughter as though at times we were on top of the world. And individually, with the darkest of circles under our eyes, each of us at times felt perfectly destroyed. But I'm here today as humbled as I am honored, proof that neither man nor woman can be defeated. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too, Rudyard Kipling was familiar with the case method of life. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters both the same, Kipling was an effectuating co-creator of the entrepreneurial poetic type. <laughs> And if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it in one turn of pitch and toss, Kipling would have owned the Biltmore <laughs> and never breathe a word about your loss. For in a different time, Kipling at heart would have been a Darden graduate for his poem speaks of responsible, principled leaders of the world's practical affairs. If you can talk with crowds, and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose your common touch. Kipling described the essence of a global MBA. And from that MBA, I have three nuggets of wisdom. Well, more, but these three. <laughs> Robert Carraway, your goal is not to be the smartest person in the room. Your goal is to be the most influential. And then for those of you, like me, with student loans on your mind, consider Yorgos. Debt is cheap. <laughs> because in this case, the cost of ignorance and the cost of meekness are both immeasurable. And whether it be in your publicly traded company, your privately held firm, your community, or your family, your purpose, our purpose, is to create value. My wish for us all is to be bold, to stand alone, to do what it takes to make change in this world, set our own goals. For as Goethe said, what you get by achieving your goals is not nearly as important as what you become by achieving your goals. So as we celebrate today, this Darden MBA, let it not define us. For the process does not end with a tassel and a frame. The process is indeed a continuum. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. Darden has given us the tools to go the distance. The distance run is now up to us. Congratulations, everybody. Godspeed. Thank you very much, Stephanie. It's now my pleasure to introduce Gus Nickel, selected as the graduation speaker by the MBA for Executives class. Thank you, Dean Bruner.
It was my great honor and privilege this morning to listen to Secretary Mavis deliver some inspiring and motivational words. As a career naval officer, it was particularly meaningful to hear him speak of service and sacrifice. I assure you, I have never received a similar accolade from a national magazine, <laughs> although I'm sure it's quite a resume builder. <laughs> like any self-respecting fighter pilot, I have been accused unjustly of communicating using only my hands. <laughs> to prove my innocence and in deference to Jefferson's rule of threes, I will only talk about three things today. History, tradition, and service. <laughs> 30 years ago, I matriculated to a small liberal arts school in New Haven, Connecticut, an institution defined by a rich tradition of service and patriotism. I was greeted by Nathan Hale, class of 1773, and his inscription, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Woolsey Hall, Yale's version of the Rotunda, is a war memorial. Nearly a thousand names etched in marble for posterity. Many answered President Lincoln's call for volunteers. 168 of them died fighting, 55 for the Confederacy and 113 for the Union. 10,000 served in World War I, including the very first naval aviators. 225 of them did not return. An entire generation of George Herbert Walker Bush's children of privilege served their country abroad and then spent a lifetime serving their nation at home. World War II alone gave the Memorial Rotunda 514 names. Students and recent graduates who gave their last full measure, the very embodiment of the ideal that to whom much is given, much is expected. I left with an overwhelming sense of obligation to serve, to create a future worthy of the past. While that experience inspired me to serve my country, this one inspires all of us to better serve our enterprises, our communities, and our families. We are all products of our environment, indelibly imprinted with institutional values that rest comfortably on the shoulders of giants. I owe my reverence for tradition to my family. My father was a Korean War Marine. My grandfather enlisted during World War I at the ripe age of 37. My great-great uncle, Captain Isaac Nichol, was killed at Gettysburg. Another served on General Washington's staff during the Revolutionary War. Generations of service build on one another until the pillars of virtue form an enduring legacy. And so it is with this great university, propelled from one man's extraordinary passion for lifetime learning. He imagined a distinguished future that no one else could see, and he breathed life into his academical village. It is fitting that Jefferson spoke of drinking from the cup of knowledge, for Darden is an empty vessel. It's form shaped by one man's lifelong passion for learning as a shared process forged by enduring institutional values and lovingly polished by a world-class faculty and staff. It is the holy grail of community. Yet it is up to us how we fill the cup, how we create a future worthy of the past. We depart here with one eye on this rich history and its singular sense of purpose, and one eye towards an expansive future. We carry the mutual obligations to uphold the Jeffersonian ideals of the past of selfless service. In my experience, people only desire three things in life, to be a valued member of a winning team on an inspiring journey. Exceptional leadership provides for that, and Darden has armed us very well to assume such responsibility. It is no coincidence that the Darden mission omits the idea of revenue maximization 
Instead, the tenets of principled leadership and service to others resonate everywhere. Traditions, however, are not the exclusive domain of powdered wigs and quill pens fixed in perpetuity. Our daily actions either reinforce and expand them or diminish and marginalize them. Traditions are inspired by those who live the values, honor, service, uh-oh. <laughs> honor, service, inspiration, teamwork, trust, and leadership. One of my favorite military traditions embodies the Darden essence of teamwork and community, the challenge coin. Challenge coins have a very rich personal history dating back to World War I, when an American pilot escaped German captivity during a night bombardment, successfully crossed no man's land, only to be recaptured by the French. Ultimately, he proved his identity using a personal squadron challenge coin. Instead of executing him as an enemy spy, they gave him a bottle of wine. Not bad, right? <laughs> the coins are symbols of intense pride, promote individual strength and courage, and inspire teamwork and camaraderie. They challenge us to channel our human capital in a manner consistent with institutional values and service to others. I have seen all the ways in which the challenge part of the coin tradition breeds self and mutual accountability to the highest standards. It exemplifies how the values of high performance teams become institutionalized, both self-policing and self-reinforcing. In this spirit, I propose a new tradition. It begins here today with us on this stage. I hold in my hand a magical coin, a golden ticket, a passport to the future. It contains no intrinsic value, yet it is priceless. There are only 60 of them in the entire world, numbered sequentially, both identical and unique. It possesses extraordinary power to bind the 60 across time and space to each other and to this beloved crucible of personal growth and learning. The coin both honors the past and forges the future. In your pocket, it will witness moments of greatness and extraordinary achievement. Its currency is a shared set of core values shaped by this great institution. The visionaries who created it and the dedicated few who perpetually sharpen its edge. It connects honored traditions to a shared future not yet imagined. Where will your coin take you? What will your eyes see? What will your hands touch? What will your heart feel? What will your mind imagine? Whom will you serve? How will you honor the past while creating the future? St. Francis said, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. My challenge to you and our solemn obligation, live the Darden values using words only if necessary. There are many ways to serve, but serve you must. Answer the call. Give it all away by commanding the totality of your personal resources to engage and inspire. Share yourself and your wisdom generously to make good things happen for others. That is my definition of servant leadership. Polish your coin every day. And by that I mean that this coveted symbol does not rep represent a singular achievement. It is earned every single day through a renewed commitment to each other, to selfless service, and to cherished institutional values. Let this coin be your witness and a constant reminder of the Darden mission, inspirational leadership that improves the world through learning, collaboration, and relationships. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2014.
Thank you very much, Gus. Nicely done. Last but not least, I welcome Brandon Guichard to the podium. He represents the full-time MBA program and uh, has the third and final message for us. In just a few minutes, we will begin a walk across this stage to collect a sign and a symbol of our hard work and success over the past two years. The degrees we receive today will forever mark our accomplishment as graduates of the Darden School of Business. But beyond a piece of paper, our degrees re represent an experience that has prepared us to lead the world as general managers. As general managers, we are now ready to enter any boardroom around the globe, to address any chief executive, any president, or any partner. And when we are asked, should our company invest? What new market should our company enter? Or how should our company frame its strategic vision? We. We can now boldly and confidently answer with the three most magical words at Darden. Well, it depends. <laughs> because of course it depends. It depends on the hard stuff, the levered or maybe unlevered cost of capital, the number of crystal ball simulations that we run, and both the right side credits and left side debits. It also depends on the soft stuff, the mission, the values, the culture, and the ability to communicate and connect with others. All of business all of life depends on so many variables and unknowns that success is most often found by those who are equipped not with the answers, but with the frameworks and the self-awareness to recognize the beauty that exists in a messy and complicated world. That is what we leave Darden with. Throughout all three MBA formats, we are leaving Darden with the tools, the lessons, and the memories that will allow us to appreciate the infinite possibilities of life. And we have built these things by challenging one another on the status quos and on the biases of the views we used to carry, the ways we used to think. Over the last two years, we have challenged and engaged one another because we truly care about every member of our community and because we believe with every fiber of our being that a rising tide lifts all boats. It is sad to think that we could lose the spirit of that challenge as we move away from Charlottesville, but it doesn't have to be that way. <coughs> Through the lifelong friendships we have built here at Darden, we can continue to support and to push each other, to find our passion, to always be grateful, and to live for both ourselves and for others. Because in doing so, in doing those three things, we can become the very best versions of ourselves. So challenge number one, finding our passion. Just a few weeks ago, Professor Rodriguez gave a lecture in Abbott Auditorium, and one of the most moving themes of his speech was an encouragement to us to explore our passions and to find a purpose about which we could be enthusiastic. To carry that message one step further, we should help each other choose the things that we are most passionate about and support one another as we pursue those things with every ounce of our energy. By the nature of who we are, we are an ambitious group, and we want to have it all. Work, life, and balance. But the truth is, our time is limited. After all, there are only 24 hours in a day, so we need to be deliberate in how we spend that time. Although we may want to, we cannot do everything. Instead, we must focus on the three or four things that we care most about and dedicate ourselves to those things completely and entirely. In order to do that, let's leverage our friendships and our intimate knowledge of one another to help guide our process of self-discovery as we search for our purpose, our passions. Challenge number two, always be grateful. Today we will celebrate a great personal achievement. We have earned our degrees through hours of reading and preparation 
hundreds of cases, and more late nights than we could possibly count. But we would be remiss not to acknowledge those who helped us get to this day. Every one of us has been coached, mentored, and to be honest, sometimes coddled on our journey to this place. So we should challenge each other to reach out to someone, someone who helped you get here, and let them know how much you appreciate everything that they've done for you. If for you that someone is a member of the Darden community, a former work colleague, a teacher, a coach, a parent, a family member, or a friend, then take the time today. Get in touch with them however you can and express your gratitude. If you have a partner who has supported you during your time at Darden, let them know that their name belongs on your degree every bit as much as your own. But let's not just thank someone today, let's challenge each other to do it every single day. As Isaac Newton once said, we are only able to see as far as we do because we stand on the shoulders of giants. And for us, those giants are the people who have supported us and who will continue to encourage us along the paths of both our professional and personal lives. Challenge number three, living our lives in the service of others. John Wooden, the legendary UCLA men's basketball coach, captured the essence of this idea when he said, you cannot live a perfect day without doing something for someone who will never be able to repay you. Can you imagine anything more powerful, anything more beautiful, anything more perfect than that? Doing something for someone who will never be able to repay you. We will be the leaders of our generation, and we will be in positions to impact the world in significant and meaningful ways. Whether we become business executives or community leaders, the 400 of us will have the capacity to affect millions of lives. And we can build a better world for our children and for every future generation as long as we continue to challenge each other to live as servant leaders. As we prepare for our post darden lives, I hope we can continue the growth that we've started here together. Through our commitment to each other, let us endeavor to discover and engage our deepest passions and sincerest interests. Let us strive to always be grateful for the talents with which we have been blessed, for the successes we will undoubtedly achieve, and for those who will support us along the way. But above all, as we aspire to model ourselves in the true sense of perfection, as defined by John Wooden, living our lives in the service of our companies, of our communities, and for our fellow man, let us, Darden Class of 2014, let us be perfect. Thank you very much, Brandon. We'll now begin the process of conferring degrees. And this, is, this looks a little complicated up front, but actually this is Darden teamwork at its best. Uh, senior Associate Deans Venkat Traman and Rodriguez will place hoods on the candidates, assisted by our honorary marshals, Jim Clausen and Robert Speckman. Associate Dean Yorgos Alianis will announce the names of the Global MBA for Executives degree recipients, and then Professor Paul Simcoe will announce the MBA for Executives recipients. Faculty marshals Greg Fairchild and Bobby Parmar will alternate reading the names of the full-time MBA degree recipients and will assist me in awarding the diplomas. Professor Alan Beckenstein, who chairs Darden's Academic Standards Committee, will assist with the recognitions. We'll begin by awarding diplomas to those who have earned doctors of philosophy and dual degrees, and then we'll award the Master of Business Administration degree. Please. following students have completed the degree in Doctor of Philosophy. M. Ishrat Ali. Brett D. Crane. 
Adrian Ambrose Clement Keevil. The following students have completed the combined degree with Juris Doctor. Stephen Paul Bryant. John Holmes Cantrell. Alejandra E. Booster. Andrew Wesley Green. Daniel Simon Guarnera. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Lansing Corbett Lee. Adebayo Akim Awolewa. Ravi Raman Smith. Joseph Benjamin Tyson III. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. The following student has completed the combined degree with Doctor of Medicine, Michael Weldon Diana. The following students have completed the degree program in Master of Business Administration. Tariq Samir Jaudat Al-Qadi. <laughs> Douglas Charles Andriuk. <laughs> Cozy E. Bailey, Jr. Daniel W. Baker, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. You get something. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Bezruchko. Jason Scott Brigadier. Douglas Robert Chow. Daniel Wu Cho. Julius Cedric Keith De Silva. Rafael Enrique Duyos III. Marcus Johnson. Joseph Jost. Dana Marie McNamara. Tahmina Nurova. <laughs> I can do that. Well, I know one more person is watching us from Bariloche, Argentina. That's John Freeman, and uh, I hope you're having a good time. <laughs> and, and some others. <laughs> Um, John Adam Pegues, <laughs> Apollo Proteus Clayton, Thomas Gary Rubenstein II, Joseph Hughes Schaefer, Stephanie Susan Scuderi. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Well done. Jordan E. Sorkin. I believe this is C. Stuart Shepherd Service Award and daughter. Uh, and uh, the, the citation reads, uh, Jordan is receiving this award for his service as graduation chair, creator of a mentoring program for Gemba class of 2015, <clears throat> active participant of all admissions events in the DC area, and leader of a team of student cheerleaders who keep faculty and student spirits high, including my C's, my, myself, while overseas. 
Uh, Jordan rose to the occasion to be the first among equals. Congratulations. Masanori Ozawa. <laughs> and I get a plus one from Masa. <laughs> Siva Rama Chaudhary Vankie Nemi. <laughs> Oliver Weiss. <laughs> Joseph. Wilburn Anglin. Yeah. Donald Carl Abach. <laughs> Leonardo Basola. Yeah. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence, as yeah. well as the Darden MBA for Executives Faculty Award. And the citation reads, for Leo's academic leadership, demonstrated not only through his willingness to challenge his classmates through respectful disagreement, but also through his thoughtful and thought-provoking comments. He often applied real-life examples to the lessons we taught and infused the cohort with an energy that led to a higher level of learning. These qualities exemplify the equitable and supportive environment required of the Darden classroom. Jared D. Blaney. Robert Stewart Burton. Christine M. Butler. Judith Nettles Cole. Mark Matthew Coster. Maury Addison Denton. Asalia Gamil Dinkins. Carlos Enrique Espinoza. Jeremy Kyle Evans. Jill Gilliland. Andrew John Green, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Gary William Grimes II. Gregory Wayne Hermendorfer. Anthony Minan Huang. Jeff Allen Huggins. Franz Joseph John Baptiste Jr. Diana L. Jeffrey. Justin Elliott Morgan Jones, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Joseph Scott Just. John Lloyd Kramer. Jason David Lamb. Lars Edward Lawson. Michael David Lopes. Lisa Lorimer Donahue, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Brent Andrew Louis. Carla Jane Mano. Carlo is the winner of the C. Stewart Shepherd Service Award for the class. And the citation reads, her passionate commitment to community service created numerous opportunities for her classmates to give back. She leaves behind a legacy that includes the creation of the Spark of Music Foundation and the West Haven Holiday Sharing Project, two outstanding examples of Carla's philanthropic leadership. Margaret Lewis Marchant. S. Hughes Melton. K. 
Kevin Jason Mikolashik. Arjun Maldonado. Sarah Millam Morris. Alfred Augustus Nicole. Rick Hiroshi Nishimoto. Peter Matthew Olson. And Elizabeth Potsky. Mark Pushinsky. Rishi R. Ranjan. Patrick Thomas Robson. Clever Rumoado da Silva. Joseph Matthew Smiley. Khalil Damani Stewart Stevenson. Gregory Paul Stutman, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Lauren Gray Tipton. Chintan Bartesh Kumar Tripathi. Fez Mohammed Vahidi. Yes. Stephen Bruce Van Cott. Emily Christine Whipple. Fraser Francis White IV. Ernest Carl Woodward, Jr. Christopher Imai Young. Abba Yeboba Akun. <laughs> Kenneth H. Acuna. Jaime Caro Agostines. Angelica Mercedes Alum. Michael Grant Aldonis. Amanda Aaron Alexander. Dimitri Aliev. Gaston A. Alfred. Jessica Laura Alvarez. Jason Luke Anderson, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Gargi N. Upte. Colleen Therese Arthur, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Matthew Nelson Assad. Matthew Joseph Adenucci, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Matthew Travis Attaway, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Jennifer Kyle Baird. Kevin M. Bannis. Arpita Bansal. Catherine Ann Baranowski. Jefferson McDonald Bates. Casey Quinn Beal. Robert Warren Beasley. Gloria Alexandra Becker. Katrina Nicole Pabon Berg. 
William L. Bisash, Faculty Award for fac uh, Academic Excellence. Ayush Bharti. Eliab I. Bitan. Kristen Hendy Blackford. Mariah Whitcomb Blackwell. David Reese Blackwell III. Lauren Elizabeth Blaine. Daniel James Blake. Stefan Baruch Bozik. Kirsten Lauren Brea. Eric Bruhaus. Anika Serva Brown. John Frederick Bryant. Amber Boulard. Catherine Elizabeth Burke. Sandra Ellen Burke. Garrett Boyd Butler. Michelle R. Callen. G. A. Tsao. Khan Chao. Pei Pei Tsao. Robert Allen Carlisle, Jr. Matthew Joseph Castile. Somia Chaturvedi. Diane Eugene Chung. Andrew Kean Clayton. David Wade Cockrell. Henry Thomas Collin, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. 
Lloyd Miles Cohn III. Michael Cullen Conroy. Carlos Andres Correa Smiths. Peter Andrew Crow. Stacy Ann Cruz. Allison L. Cesarpak. Laura Ann Dada. Amanda Michelle Dagg. Saurabh Gagia. Del L. Daly Jr. Rajakta Datta Damle. David Kwasi Darkwa. Nathan H. McCarthy David. Anil Demir. Rajwal Dikshit. Brady James Dolan. Joseph Patrick Donlan. Antonio Curtis Dorset. Christine B. Dreas, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Caitlin Louise Isley. <laughs> Emily Claire Eisenberg. <laughs> Dwight David Emrine. <laughs> Shahar Eyal. Christine Shuo Fang. <laughs> Sylvester Chokuma Fejoku. <laughs> Eduardo Faria Camacho. <laughs> Anna Payne Fife, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence and C. Stewart Shepherd Award for her service. The citation reads, for her embodiment of Darden's mission to improve the world through her work with IBIS and as president of the Business and Public Policy Club, Anna has positively shaped the way in which students engage with their academic centers and has created opportunities to enrich the lives and learning of Darden's through, Darden students through numerous initiatives. Edward Alexander Fife. <laughs> Jennifer Michelle Foreman. <laughs> Brian Michael Furman, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> Sergio Gallegos Tejeda. Maribel K. Garcia. <laughs> Joseph Matthew Geisenhainer. <laughs> Arshpir Guman. <laughs> Graham Michael Gillum. David Lawrence Glazer, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Audrey Carol Goldman.
Elizabeth Ann Gottimer. Philip Martin Gover. Chelsea Leanne Graham. David Randolph Graham, Jr. Ari Paul Greenberg. Nicholas Hamilton Gross. Xiao Gu. Hammond Newton Guerin. Shaheli Guha. Brandon Paul Kishard, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Megan Kilcommons Guiney. Ankur Gupta. Sanjeev Gupta. Mauricio Javier Gurien. Lakshmi Gautami Gutikunda. Jennifer Adams Hagen. Michael Patrick Harding. Lane Robert Harper. Faisal Hassan Assam. Kristen M. Hill. Eleanor Reed Hinchelwood. Thon Vu Huang. Michael Edward Humanansky. Megan Elizabeth Highland. Tayo Olabisi Jackson. Chirag Jain, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. David H. Jong. Jabin G. Monty Cutterporth Jones. Patrice Chu. <laughs> Carolyn Jill Kalinowski. <laughs> Laura Francesca Kieran. <laughs> Allison Ann Kelly. Yachna Kare. Hans Kicken. Kite Kim. Minkwan Kim. Philip Kim. Grace Eugenie Ko. Atu D. Kofi Lark. Catherine Elena Koopman, C. Stewart Shepherd Service Award. And the citation reads, for epitomizing the best possible Darden brand through her work on Student Admissions Committee, whether it was opening her home for tutoring, 
hosting prospective students, or sharing cultural diversity, Katie fostered an incredible inclusive environment with her boundless energy and willingness to help others. <laughs> Jeremy Dale Cracker. Sonali Suresh Kripalani. Andrew Herbert Kreitzer. Abhishek Kumar. Chanting Kuo. Manu Kupali. L.N. Haricharan. Charles Edward Land, Jr., Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Gloria Kunying Lao. Christopher Mott Lawrence. John Chang Lee. Christy Lee. Jeremy Ian Levine. Christine Ann Lewis. Robert Warner Lewis. Scott Aaron Lieberman. Christine Wei Lu. Sue Lu. Raphael Yarena. Jose Francisco Di Sabra Andrade Lopez Martins. Christopher Ryan Loveless. Tao Lu. Keenan Holmes Lucas Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Jacob Henry Lissy. Chun Machiyama. Sumit Malhatra. Joshua Travis Mallet, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Catherine Marie Manfrey. Michael Edwards Manson, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Miguel Margen Garza. Tiago Marins Dable. David Messenger Marriott. Thomas Andrew Marshall. Ruth Martin. Andrew Edward Massaro. Madeline Hamilton Mayer. Christopher Michael McCabe. Matthew Ryan McCauley, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Rachel Kim McConnell, C. Stewart Shepherd Award. For her remarkable work as the president of the Business, Innovation, and Design Club, co-founder of the Darden Art Committee, 
which established the Darden Art Galleries, and graphic designer for the Refreshing First Coffee Initiative. Rachel takes every opportunity to give back and is known as someone who always goes above and beyond in her countless activities. Catherine Elise McDaniel. Donovan Claude McGill. Elizabeth Dwyer McKenna. Dhruv Mehta. Lauren Tarvis Mendel. Jonathan James Meredith. Benjamin Abraham Medanik. Amanda Lee Middlebrooks. Amanda Neil Miller, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Joseph A. Miller. Georgie Minnick. Thomas C. Minoff. Yasin Christopher Muir. Hope Lynn Moffitt. Benjamin W. Moley. John Sanford Molster, Jr. Matias Andras Patricio Montangero. Joshua Moore. Jorge Rodrigo Moreno Torino. Benjamin Morisot, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Charles Armand Morris. Scott Peterson Matejunas. Ryan Matthew Muldowney. Harsha Nagaraj. Patricio Naro Laborin. Peter Jacob Neems. Brandon Kirk Nelson. Marcus George Newland. Nyat Tin Nguyen. Michael Steiner Nevis. Maria Welch Nolan. Neka Chikaori Angeline Inwosu. Jennifer Ashley O'Brien. Jonathan Curtis O'Connor. Doreen Atswe Okang. Andrew Neil Olison. Ashley Marie Ost Levinsa. Adam Michael Owens. Martha Mason Page.
Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Brannon Cox Painter. <laughs> Renzo Parodi Morris. Jonathan Talbot Payne. Marcos Pereira Moran. John Peter Petrovsky. Vasilos Petropoulos. Edward Scott Pointevent. Rohan Anish Puyara. Brandon Michael Prather. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Allison Claire Prendergast. Matthew L. Priest, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Hold on. Frederick S. Morton Leadership Award. And I read the citation as follows. <laughs> Established to the Darden School Foundation in honor of Frederick S. Morton, who taught at Darden from 1957 to 1989, this award annually recognizes a Darden student for, ex for excellence in leadership and the faculty member who contributed most to that student's experience. The faculty recipient is announced in the fall of 2014. The 2014 Morton Committee recognizes Matthew Priest for his outstanding servant leadership in a myriad of activities, including section review coordinator, section year tutor, second year coach, member of the MBA Advisory and Student Club, and founding member of the Adam Smith Society. An enormously respected and admired community leader who helped shape a vision while outlining strategies for continued improvement. Matthew is an inspiration for those around him, and he represents the best of Darden student leadership. Aaron Nicole Pryor. Mariella Rezori Yori. Brian Stephen Record. Jacqueline Catherine Reese. Enball Reichman Cohen. Jonathan Gardner Roberts. Andrew Carroll Robertson, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Eric Daniel Ross. Liridon Rushaj. Patrick Ryan Rutherford. Margot K. Sakoyan. Isaac Salem. Abhishek Samanta. It was a faculty award for academic excellence for Isaac. That was that. Sarah Soledad Sanchez. Kavita Shivratan Sanganera. Herman Friedrich Schroeder. Emily Gordon Schuler. 
Kenneth Frank Schulman. Claire Janet Seekins. Michael Edom Kwaku Seishi. Amber L. Sharif. Rainy Shukla. Sim Su Han, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence and C. Stewart Shepherd Award. The citation reads, for his exemplary service as co-chair of the Diversity Student Advisory Group, Sim can be counted on to rise to the challenge, whether it is gathering research or launching an idea. He has never wavered in his commitment to improving the Darden experience for diverse students. And he is someone who gives back to the community, home, and beyond with selfless grace. Mark Sullivan Silvers. Kyle Joseph Simmons, Faculty Award for Economic Excellence. Ronald Samuel Samoankur. Hamanshu Singh. Molly Sheffield Saltanoff. <laughs> Esther Hung Young Song. <laughs> Travis Sorensen. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn Sowers. <laughs> Bayudev Srikumar. Axel Martin Stark. Yeah. Allison Robin Stewart. Yeah. Sarah Elizabeth Stewart. Yeah. Sean Andrew Sturgeon. Yeah. Matthew David Sullivan. See what? Summa ship visit Kabul. Zing Sun. Josna Sundaresen. Hao Tang. Palash Tayal. Ermal Pradeep Thakur. Sarah E. Tilbor. C. Stewart Shepherd Award. And the citation reads, for exceptional passion and dedication that brought the refreshing First Coffee initiative to life, under Sarah's leadership, the team awarded a $10,000 greening grant and was selected one of 12 groups representing the best of UVA scholarship, research, and creativity. Though highly, through highly effective stakeholder engagement, Sarah has ensured a superior and sustainable experience for all First Coffee attendees. Brian Michael Tong. John Kuk An Tan Tran. <laughs> Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> C. Stewart Shepherd Service Award. And the citation reads For that great kiss, <laughs> for his tireless dedication as Toastmasters President, Brand Challenge Coordinator. Global Ambassador, Johnny helps maintain a strong Darden community. 
and works to build an even stronger one for the future. <laughs> Referred to as a highly impactful behind the scenes leader, Johnny's incredible, kind, and humble manner makes him emblematic of the best that Darden produces. Nya Vito Tran. Luis Vallejo Garay. Ryan Christopher Vargas. Veronica Velasquez Pinado. Michael Ventura. Leslie Sabrina Viano. Ankit Vermani. Paul Daniel Voorhees. Leslie Ann Wallace. John F. Wallander. Caitlin Colleen Wampler. Kangwa Wang. Lei Wang. Wenjun Wang. Damian Warshall Jr. Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Emily L. Weinman. Nathan Allen Weir. Nicholas Westra. Ryan Scott Wheeler. Garrick Anthony Whittington. Garrett Rogers Wilson. Sarah Fry Wilson. Andrew Arthur Winston. Catherine Brennan Wright. Run Yang. William Rufus Yates, Jr. Emily Melissa Yi. Stav Yaffe. Matthew Hallam Young. Ari Shalom Zamir, Faculty Award for Academic Excellence. Peter Gregory Stephan Zorolis. Dandan Zhang. Yes. Yin Zhang. Mirasov Jizilov Jizilov. Jansi Zong. <laughs> Ye Ju. <laughs> Can we have a round of applause for the class of 2014? Our tradition in concluding the graduation ceremony is to hear a farewell song, The Irish Blessing, sung by Darden's Cold Call Chorus, which is a group of students, faculty, and staff. 
Please welcome them to the stage. On behalf of us all, I thank the Cold Call Chorus for that very touching closing to our ceremony. So in concluding these proceedings, I'll make one final comment to the class of 2014. Please proceed to the steps in front of Saunders Hall for your graduation class photograph. Meanwhile, for everyone else, our guests are invited to lunch, which is available in the classroom building on this side. And in keeping with Darden's vision to be a zero waste enterprise, please recycle your lunch in the labeled recycling containers. Uh, please accept my thanks and the thanks of the global Darden community for joining us this day. This ceremony is concluded. Next week, if you're around, I am around. Okay, well, I, I can actually see you. Uh, if you could have coffee.